you can update the operating system on your Raspberry Pi by changing the source where the Pi gets its operating system files from. And that's what we're gonna do here. I've logged into my Pi. This is a 3B plus model. I'm gonna go ahead and edit the sources where the installer gets its packages from. So in this case, I'm gonna use the nano text editor. I'm gonna open up Etsy app sources.list. You can see that my operating system is currently stretch as found here in the middle in the red letters. You might say, well, how do you know what the code word is? Well, if you go over to the Raspberry site, I found my model on the site, which is 3B plus, and it currently supports Debian 11 codename Bullseye. And in fact, all Raspberry Pi models support Bullseye. So I need to delete the word stretch, put Bullseye in its place. Now one problem I'm gonna have here is I'm gonna get an error. So let me show you what that error is. I'm gonna type control X, which you can't really see me doing, but it's the exit command. Watch what happens when I type control X. It asks me if I wanna save the buffer, meaning do I wanna save the file? I'm gonna put yes, and then I'm gonna get the error message. So the error is, is that I cannot write to this file. What is the problem? It says permission denied. The reason is, is that when you're logged into the Pi as the regular user, you cannot edit system files. So this is easy to fix. We're just gonna back out and instead of doing nano, I'm just gonna put the word sudo before that, which is gonna to elevate to the root user, and then I'll have elevated privileges, and I will be able to write to this file. So write to back to where we were, put in bullseye. This time I'll go to hit control X, yes, enter to save the file and the file saves. And if you want to prove it, you can print out the file so you can see the contents with cat Etsy app sources that list. And then you'll see the word bullseye right there. Now at this point, we just do our normal update. So sudo apt, and we're gonna do the distribution upgrade. So you can do full upgrade or you can do dist upgrade, they're synonyms for each other. But if you do this now, what happens is, is that you'll end up just getting a copy of the current operating system. So you might wonder why that is. Well, the, the way that the apt works is that it goes out to the repository on the internet, the one that we just changed the file to point to, and it downloads the packages that are available to apt and it downloads, downloads those locally onto the local machine. So whenever we do a sudo apt update, what we're doing is, is we're updating the list of files that it's possible for us to upgrade to and we're downloading that list to our local computer. So we're gonna do that first and that's gonna download the files. You can see that we're getting uh, from all these different sources, which is now bullseye because that's where we pointed the app to with the change to the file. It's now downloading a list of the packages that we can upgrade to. So now we'll go back and we'll do the sudo app dist upgrade. You can also do this as full dash upgrade. It, again, doesn't matter which one. So this time, instead of getting the result that we don't need to do any updates. Now you can see that the system is actually going out and getting copies of the new packages, bringing them down, then it will unpack them and it'll start to do the install. And this process is actually gonna take a while because I'm going from Debian 9 to Debian 11. So probably gonna take 10 or 15 minutes to complete this process. Periodically during the installation process, you're gonna see these pop-ups that are asking you if you want to keep the current version of a file or if you want to use the new version of the file that comes with the new package. 
this is not an easy answer, but generally speaking, unless you are the one who modified the old file for some good reason that you had, normally what you would want to enter here is yes, because you want to use the new version of the configuration that comes with the new software so that you get all of the new features. But this can be a breaking change. So it is something to think about if you intentionally had modified the old file to suit some purpose that you had. In my case, I'm gonna put yeses to all of these questions. At this point, the upgrade is done. We can check and see what version of software we're using with LSB underscore release dash A. And now you'll notice that my system is upgraded to bullseye. The other thing that might happen during the upgrade is you may get a notice, essentially a document that explains what some of the changes are. If you see that during the process, it's just a note trying to tell you about the upgrade and you can hit Q for quit to exit out of that screen if it hangs during your install process. So what we've seen is it's easy to update the operating system for Raspberry, even if it does take a while for the system to catch up when going from a older version of the operating system to a newer one. You can expect the process to take anywhere from 10 minutes. It could take up to an hour. It depends on how much software has to be updated, how fast the processor, how much memory you have, your capacity to download software. So lots of factors. The main thing is, is just keep an eye on the installation, answer the questions that come along if you have to, but otherwise just let it run and it'll work its way to the end on its own.